everybody, this is Tim W. Leather Tachi 1996, and for our fifth episode of Godzilla FX, we have Ghidorah the Three Headed Monster from the year 1964. Now, this review is going to be a long one because I found a crap ton of HD screenshots, and I will definitely be showing them off. And excuse me if you hear something like this in the background. Like some crunching sound. Because I have my dinner sitting behind me right now. Hmm. Oh my god. I, I can never get enough of cucumbers. Like cucumbers are always like some of my favorite things to eat. Well, Ghidorah the Three Headed Monster is the debut of, god of one of Godzilla's most one of his top three enemies, King Ghidorah. Well, they don't say King, they just say Ghidorah in the movie, or Ghidra. But, this is his debut, like I said. And, I gotta tell you, his debut was insane. Like, this is, this is one of those Godzilla movies where you'd have to really look at this and go like, Huh, okay, d d doing that now? <laughs> I mean, like the last movie, there are about five flaws that I was able to find with the special effects in this movie. Now, I'm not here to, I'm not hating on the movie, but just a few things that I've noticed while watching this, and I just got done watching this again, literally, every time I get done, every time I do these reviews, I get done watching them like an hour before, or 40 minutes or something. And here we go. And the beginning of these screenshots are going to be out of sequence here. Uh, going to be out of sequence again. But then later on they'll be in sequence. So, well not again, but sorry if they're a little out of sequence at first. But then later on they will be in sequence. Now, here's a good special effects pro right here. King Ghidorah himself. I mean, look at this thing. A three-headed dragon. It's so funny how it's a dragon. Like, he's clearly a dragon. But he's from outer space. A dragon that comes from outer space, and later on in this video you will see the dragon part. Uh, I will explain that, like his origin when that it gets to that screenshot. But just his design just looks super cool. And what's amazing is that sorry, he's played by um. Soichi Hirose again, who played King Kong, the guy who actually flipped Godzilla over. Now, th this suit was seriously bulky. I mean, the only thing that Hirose had to really control were the leg, were his legs, were the legs, and that's it. All he did was just walk around in the suit. While the three heads, the two tails, and the wings were controlled by wires. Now that actually brings me to well, uh, I'll well, I'll wait a little bit before I talk about the, the effects cons. But Ghidorah's design for a debut, it looks really good. Like I especially love his. Uh, excuse me. Oh God! Excuse me, folks. Sorry about that. Excuse me. What I do love the most is the scales on him. Oh, here we go. Here's the King of the Monsters. The King of the Monsters himself. And this is, and actually, this is the first time in God's, well, this is the first time here in the franchise that we will see a Godzilla, a Godzilla suit used twice. Now, I'm going to say design because we will, because later on we will get to we will get the uh, you you'll know what I mean by this the later this later on in the franchise, but this is the first time the same design for Godzilla was used twice. This is the same look he had in Mothra vs Godzilla, but they did some slight modifications to his face or to the suit all in general. Hence why his face it looks a little bit different, but they did fix the special effects flaw that I mentioned in the last movie where they said that remember when I said uh, pointed out that his the top of his 
his the top of his mouth shakes kind of like horse fish a little bit and it looked weird well in this movie his face don't do that but in overall his face his it's still a cool looking suit it's got a lot of tech got a lot of uh, nice not reptilian scales they're still sticking with that trademark of Godzilla is that his scales don't look they don't look very you know reptilian like Ghidorah they're irregular he's got very irregular um, skin texture despite being a, a, a reptile so yeah that's like and it, it's just and but still hitting his brows like a little they just very reminiscent of the very first of the very first movie this is so funny this uh, and I don't know if I, I crap I can't remember if I already said this but this is year 1964 so it's like this is we now see two Godzilla movies come out in the same year oh here we go here's a shot of Rodan uh, his face anyway he looks like a chicken he looks like a chicken um, this is the first uh, this is the first time Rodan uh, has appeared in a Godzilla movie now what was it 64 hold on a sec now eight years prior to this uh, Rodan did have his own movie simply titled Rodan in 1956, but this is the f his first time appearing alongside Godzilla, and I and I remember what I've only seen Rodan's debut movie like once, and it just sucks that they changed his look. Like seriously, I mean Rodan actually looked mean. I, I, he actually looked mean. This chicken look just looks. It just, why did they change his look up? Like. Okay, for Godzilla, it's weird enough that they keep changing his design every every movie here so far. I mean, I know we're only five movies in, but so far he's had four design four design changes. Rodan, I mean, it he it would have been better if they just would have stuck with the design if they would have just reused the suit from his from eight the from the movie eight years prior. Sorry about that. And, I mean, I do like the very bird-like look, despite him really being a giant pterodactyl. But, he looks like a chicken, though. He looks like a scaly chicken. With his head, anyway. Just wait until I, just wait until I talk, just wait until I talk about his full body. Hmm. And, once again, I mean, the miniature rock said he's busting out of it. I mean, this is him coming out of a volcano in the movie but I really do like this look I mean I really do like the miniature set it looks really rocks like I said and I think in Mothra vs Godzilla rocks look more realistic than buildings do and then here's when he just comes out of the volcano he's just flying around in the back now this shot here um I mean it really does get the this is one effects pro this is another this is an effects pro I'm giving it I'm giving this movie here. Um I can't tell if this was a, a full shot, if this was a location shot or a miniature. Because to me personally, it looks like a miniature shot. Um if anybody can I mean I guess that's one of the best things about this film. That is one of the best things about this movie, is it? It's just this one shot. I can't tell if that's a mini or not. Like, seriously. Like, I actually cannot tell. I mean, Rodan flying in the background. I mean, he was just a little puppet. So, I mean, that's the thing with these movies. They're, they're always using, like, practical, uh, practical effects. I mean, like, oh, and this brings me to my first con. My very first con, which is about... Well, actually... My first con, I'm sorry Godzilla's not in the shot, I should have brought this up when uh, I had the picture of Godzilla up. When Godzilla first shows up in the movie, there's these weird, they're the first effects con that I'm really, that I gotta, that I'm really gonna say about this, about this film is, there's a shot right before Godzilla shows up, um, there's a shot of like, there's supposed to be whales or something, I guess there's supposed to be whales. But the puppets look weird. Like, they look like fish. They just look like regular fish. I don't know if those were fish or not. I don't know if those were actual fish or not. No. 
So I don't know. It just that it just looked really weird. It it just didn't it um it, it that they, they could have done the shot better is what I'm saying. And also, um, this brings me to actually this shot of Rodan here. Uh, it I mean, he I like the de I like how he has spikes on his torso. I I love how he's got spikes on his entire torso, which kind of you know distinguishes him from a. Two spikes on the torso and two horns above his eyes. Um, they distinguish him from other pterodactyl species, which I really like. And, but there's one con that I will say about Rodan here. There is a part, there is one shot where you can see the wires holding him up. I mean, it's like how I pointed out with Godzilla's tail way back in the first movie. How you can see the wire holding his tail up. With Rodan here, you can. There's one shot where you can see the wires holding him up, or holding the puppet up. And it's unknown whether it was the suit or the puppet. Nine out of ten was probably the puppet. But there's a shot where you can see the wires holding the pup, holding Rodan up at one point. And also, I didn't bring this up. I'm, and also, the same thing with Ghidorah, that's my third effects con in this movie, is when Ghidorah shows up, there's actually two cons that I have with um, Ghidorah. As awesome as he is, as amazing as he is in this movie, he really is. There is a shot where you can see the wires controlling Ghidorah's wings. And then there's a shot where he's like way off in the distance. When he first starts attacking, attacking what I'm guessing is Osaka. Oh, here we go. This is where Godzilla. Um, now this is where the pictures are in sequence. Um, now look at the. Now look at that piece of that. I will always give that effect like pro. Right now, anyways, we're only five movies in, but it he looks so cool like that, and they show the fish, the weird fish puppet, probably I don't know. Right before this, and just look at that. It you can tell this is like one of those. Oh, they scratched the film up, so they scratched the film to, to pull that effect off. It looks really cool. I really like, and I also like that his atomic breath is not transparent. His atomic breath is not transparent. Um, finally, it's solid, which I really like. Well, I mean, I guess it's kind of transparent because you can see his claw through the atomic breath. So I guess he's, it, it's solid with a little bit of transparency. But overall, it's not as transparent as it was in the last two the uh, last two movies. Mm. And one thing I will one thing I will mention, this was the movie that this is where the monster rumble came from, like having Godzilla fight multiple monsters at one time. And I'll get to that later. Like, I will get to that a little later here. And he, he... I don't know. It's just Godzilla. There's... You can never have any effects cons with him. Seriously. I mean, other monsters? Yeah, you could. But Godzilla, he's not perfect. I mean, the effects are not like... I mean, they're perfect for the time and the budget. I'll give it that much. I don't know. You can, I can't really say... I cannot... Honest to God, I can't really say much about it. I can't really give Godzilla too many cons, actually. I mean, I guess you could call it a small little non-important con when uh, you can see his claw through the thing, through the atomic breath, and while well, the rest of it's solid, which is really odd. And then you have the great mini... the super detailed miniatures that Godzilla walks through. Like, seriously, just, when, the, okay, when stuff gets destroyed in this movie, and I, when, I will come back to, when stuff gets destroyed in this movie, it's like, it's like early Michael Bay. Um, Godzilla walking through the miniatures, it's like, okay, the buildings are crumbling, some stuff blowing up, but... When Ghidorah comes to the city, comes to the city, and he starts shooting the lightning that comes out of all three of his heads, I found out are called gravity beams, which I don't know where they got that name from. But when he goes through the city, 
everything just explodes. It's over. He's overpowered. Ghidorah just goes way overpowered in this movie. Here I'm talking about Ghidorah and Godzilla. And the, and the, I'm on a shot of Godzilla right now. But the building's crumbling. The city, the main effect highlight in this movie, which is like the buildings and cities getting destroyed, those look amazing in this movie. Like, it's a it's a definite big, it's an improvement over Mothra vs. Godzilla, which, pro, which, I, which came out just uh, like a few months before that. A few months before this. So, it's like, I guess Toho is trying to, it's like with each movie so far, it looks like they're like, okay, let's go bigger, bigger, bigger. And the bigger they get, the better the move, the better and more fun the movie is. Alright, I'm still eating my cucumber. And here's a, here's a shot of Godzilla, like, close up. This is uh, when Rodan flies overhead. And the way when Rodan flies over him... It's like, it's this little black silhouette. It's like this little silhouette cutout against a matte painting. I was going to list that as a con, but at the same time, though, it's like, it's it. This, this scene is at night, so you can't really list it as a con. Oh, and anyways, what I was saying about Ghidorah, um, sorry I got off topic. Well, um, one thing I was saying about Ghidorah, one con, the... I listed the con with him about seeing the wires, and then there's the second con I was talking about was when he comes to the city, when he starts to turn the city, there's a shot of him, like, way out in the distance. <coughs> Excuse me. There's a shot of him when he's way out in the distance, and I call it a con because he it doesn't look like it's Ghidorah in the distance. It looks like a little, little bird in the distance. It's like Toho filmed a little sparrow or something against sunlight or whatever it just looks weird it looks like dude they could have done so much better with that anyways back to the shot of godzilla let me look he's looking at like what what's going what's going on up there i'm hearing something i don't know i don't know what it is oh i see something up there <laughs> i mean godzilla's not an idiot by he's not an idiot by no means but uh well, in King Kong vs. Godzilla, they made him out to be. They tried to make him to make him out to be an idiot, but because he's a reptile. But I, I'm only doing that. I'm only making my voice that deep because when you think about it, Godzilla probably might have a deep voice because he's so big. Now, once again, the great Haruo, um, Haruo Nakajima plays him again. Oh, and this is when Godzilla and Rodan fight. Okay. Now, this, okay, now before I get to the con, here's the pro. When you look at this shot, you see like a good green screen. This, this is an obvious location shot, it really is. Location shot with green screen, Godzilla and Rodan in the back, in front of a matte painting of Mount Fuji. Now, this whole shot, for 1964, it blends really good. It really blends. I love the compositing on this. I really do love the compositing on this shot. That's another effects pro is the compositing here. The compositing and blending of different little bits. I don't know, it just looks so convincing for 1964. Like, you can't even tell that Mount Fuji's a matte painting in the back. You really can't, you really cannot tell. And the con that I will, this is probably, I think, my last, my last con. This is my last con. And that I will save for this movie is when Godzilla and Ronan fight. Um, there's shots of them with the with the suits, and then there's these shots of these smaller these smaller little hand puppets that they had for Godzilla to smack Rodan and for Rodan to peck at him and everything. It looks like they were, to me personally, like they were not needed. They were so not needed in this movie. They could have done the whole fight with the suits. And it would have been, it would have, and it, the fight is, it's cool to watch, but then it gets funny to watch when they, when they zoom in and they start, 
and you can tell it's the smaller puppets. Now, if they would have done that entire fight with the suit, with the suits, it would have looked so much better. Oh, and here's the um, shot of Ghidorah that I mentioned a lot earlier. When he, him, okay, when the meteorite that he comes out of crashes down in the mountains, it's a good effect. I, it's a really, really good effect. And then when he comes out of the meteor as this ball of fire and he morphs into Ghidorah here, it is really good. That's, that is definitely a little highlight. It's like it's like Godzilla's face being on fire in the last in the movie before this. It's a good thirty sec. It's a good like this isn't even like thirty seconds. This is like this is like ten seconds of the movie, but it's a really cool ten seconds. And I, it's so cool that um, they have the fire morphing into Ghidorah. Like it's a dragon, but they really do a, they really do a good job on the oh he's from outer space he's an alien. It's hard. To, I know Ghidorah is an alien, but looking at him, it's really hard to call him that. It really is. Sorry, I'm still eating. I'm still eating this cucumber. Um, it's really hard to call him an alien by looking at him. Like it's obvious he is. It's really obvious that he is an alien. But when you look at him, it's a dragon, really, a dragon from outer space that... Okay, I've... Okay, when it comes to sci-fi, like, okay, we've all heard a lot of crazy outlandish stuff when it comes to science fiction and monster films, but a dragon from space... I mean, I do give Toho credit for being original on that, but... It's a really, really odd idea, really interesting concept. But, anyways... The effect for him, for the fire, now oh, there you go. The, the effect for the fire morphing into this guy is really cool. It, it's a really, I, it's really, really well done. Uh, and also, one thing, I do, I will talk about this, because I, I don't know why I haven't talked about it in a while. In, in uh, any of my other reviews, but I did say I think it was on the first film when I reviewed the first movie. I was going to talk about the sound effects. Okay, this this thing sound sound effects. Oh my god! It, it, okay, you have Godzilla. Everyone knows Godzilla's mighty screeching, loud, really loud roar. And then you got Rodan, who since he's a pterodactyl, he has to sound like it. He's squawking. He has this really, his, you know, his roar sounds like a bird. <laughs> Ghidorah's roar. No, nope. sorry everybody. I'm eating a can of mixed uh, veggies. Uh, now, now I am. Ghidorah's roar, though. I have, I have no words to describe that. It sounds so weird. Like I guess they're trying to still stay with the fact that he's an alien I guess like they're still sticking with that like they stick with it the whole movie I mean like really you shoot a it's a dragon with three heads that sounds like it's from space and it shoots gravity beams like yeah uh, yep that's not from this planet I don't know Ghidorah's roar it's not a con it's a pro Cause it's something because it sounds different I mean, and then here you got a close-up of Rodan here you got a close-up this was the um I think I can't tell whether this was the suit or the little puppet actually now you can see Rodan okay the two horns I guess they could have done better I guess they could have done a lot better with that uh, the two horns behind his head and he's got like two smaller horns in front of his eyes like they're very easy to miss when you're when you're looking at Rodan, but th those so don't look like they they don't look like they even needed to be there. And he's got like this weird, I don't know, like it's okay. I don't know why he has teeth when uh, since he's supposed to be a pterodactyl. Pterodactyls did not have teeth. No, oh, it's so weird. 
I mean, it's so weird that he has teeth. Like, I am so, like, I'm not weirded out by it. I mean, I guess I kind of am. I mean, I guess I am kind of weirded out by the fact that Rodan has teeth and yet pterodactyls didn't have teeth. Like, the detailing in his face and his body, yeah, it looks good. I like the, I like the Rodan suit. The puppet just looks very... Like I said, it was so not needed. They did not need to use a smaller puppet for him and Godzilla to fight. No. Sorry about all that noise I'm eating out of the... Sorry about all the noise in the back. I'm eating straight out of the can. Mixed veggies. It my favorite... Uh, can of veggies to eat. I always loved them mixed vegetables when I was in, uh, I think middle school. Anyways, and then there's this. And then there's this. Okay, the way they explain it was that one of the Mothra, one of the twin larvae from the, from the last film apparently died somehow. So now there's only one Mothra again. And there's this effect that they do when uh, the twin fairies, played by different actresses, which I... Mm, actually, I don't know if it's different actresses. Now that I think about it, they kind of did look like the ones from the, from the last movie. But the, there's there's effect. I, I wonder how they pulled this off in 1964, because... There's a scene where the two twin fairies are, they're apparently doing commercial stuff now. It's like the twin fairies are interacting with the public so much. They're on this show, and the show is literally called What Are They Doing Now? It's a really odd title. And they sing this song. They sing Mothra's, like, the song of happiness, it's called. And they have this thing where the twin fairies, they float over the ocean to... They call it Infant Island now. It's not Mothra Island. It's Infant Island now, apparently. So, they have them transparent, and they're floating above the ocean towards the island. And then here they are, transparent, and f sitting next to the Mothra larva here. Like, how did they do this? I mean, seriously, and there's a lot of, like, there's a lot of scenes where you have something transparent comes up in the middle of the scene when somebody's when one of the human characters is remembering stuff like this movie the effects in this movie they decided to like it's like they're saying oh let's put this in oh let's put that in oh let's try that like seriously they really and this is out of sequence that was out of sequence again that picture oh and here's see look there's the suits of God's own Rodan in the background see why did they have to use those two smaller puppets? It looks goofy. It really does. It really looks goofy. I'm sorry. I I'm also oh. one interesting thing about this film is that we're already we're at the point in the Godzilla franchise where they start giving human personalities to these mo to the monsters. Now, I'm not saying that's a bad thing, and I will go a little more, I'm not saying that's a bad thing, I will go a little more in depth on that later in this video. I will, yeah, I'll go a little more in depth about that. But, see, this normal monster battle, just, I ain't got really nothing, to, I don't have much to say about this shot, but it's like, see, there you go. Rodian suit, Godzilla suit in the back, green screen in the background, and once again, very good compositing shot. And I, that's that's definitely a location shot. That is so that you can tell that was a location shot. Anyways, <laughs> I don't know. So how's everyone doing tonight? Yeah, like I said, I will go in depth. Uh, in depth, uh, in depth in a few minutes. I keep on sitting repeating that. Sorry, about how they apply human traits to the monsters here, and there's one scene where they do it, and I will explain that here in a here in a little bit, or later in the video. Sorry. Well, 
depending if the screenshot comes up here. Oh, and here's Rodan. This is right before the scene that I was just talking about earlier. Um, here's another close-up of Rodan. Now, what's so funny is if you look at his beak, the his beak, the top of it, the, it looks a little. I don't know why. I guess because this this the suit has been was beat up during the course of the during the course of the movie. Because if you notice, his bottom the bottom of his beak is a little more wider than the top. And he's got that look on his face. You can make a meme out of his face. Like, seriously. It could be a meme. Like, it's like, hey, like, hey what's going on? What's good? Want some drugs? <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm just joking. But that face, though. <laughs> Rohan's face, though. Oh, my God. He's like, what's good? You want to go? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so, nah, no, I'm not sorry. I like making jokes. That's who I am. Anyways, <laughs> well, that's the only weird thing I gotta say about this shot of Rodan here. But you got the you got the miniature set in the back, and I love the rock sets. I love the set the sets where they're out in the countryside. I mean, I love the city sets. Don't get me wrong, but I love the uh, countryside or uh, more environmental. Uh, miniature sets more because it looks a little more realistic. And once again, we get to see more detail on the Rodian on the Rodian suit. You know, you got much to say. I'm sorry. Like, I see as you can tell, I found a crap ton of, I found a crap ton of HD screenshots and, uh, out out of this movie, out of this film, and it was very. Uh, I don't know. In this movie, okay. And here's the Mothra. Okay, this is the scene I'm talking about. Um, th there's this point when Godzilla and Rodan are, for some reason, throwing a boulder back and forth. Like, they're playing catch. Don't know why. They were beating the crap. They were beating the crap out of each other a little bit ago. Now they're playing catch with a boulder. It's weird. And then you got Mothra who shoots them with their... Who shoots them both with her web. And it's so funny. The, the scene when Mothra does that to both of them, it's hilarious because you'll see, like, she'll, this is where she shoots Rodan. In this shot, in this screenshot in particular, she's shooting at Rodan, but before this, she shoots at Godzilla, and this is what I mean when they, they were at the point where they're giving human traits to the monsters, is when Mothra shoots webbing at Godzilla, you will see Rodan actually laughs at Godzilla. He laughs at him, like, seriously. Then, when Mothra does the same thing to Rodan, Godzilla just... He laughs his ass off. He does. Godzilla just laughs his ass off at Rodan. It's like, oh my god, did they really have to put this in this movie? But then when you look at it, you're like, okay, you know what? That's actually funny. You know what? I gotta give them that. That's... I mean, whoever came up with that idea... I mean, Nakajima, really, Godzilla laughing, he really made it look funny. I, I will give it that much, because Nakajima, he knows how to play Godzilla. At this point, he's a pro, in all honesty. He's a definite pro. I mean, I get, I know some of you are going to say, he was a pro way back in the first movie. Well, at this point, it's like nothing to him. <laughs> it's like nothing. He just he can, go, he can just get in a Godzilla suit and just say, and he just, alright, go ahead, buddy. And I do like the Mothra puppet. I think this is like... Um, I don't know if this is the same puppet um, from the last movie. It don't look like it because it looks a little more softer. Oh, there you go. See, here's where Rodan is just getting covered in webbing right now. And then Godzilla, like I said, Godzilla laughs his ass off at him. And it's, it's just so funny. And the effect, I really like the effect of it. I really do. That This is another effects pro with this movie is when they both get blasted with the webbing. In the face, even, and Mothra tries to get their attention. It's just, I don't know. It's just like the human personality scene. It's just like, okay, well, it's really a more like a summit meeting of giant monsters. Because the twin fairies, they come up with this idea, like, like the military for some reason can't come up with a way to stop Ghidorah. So the twin fairies come up with the idea, and I'm sorry, other background noise, and I'm sitting in my desk chair right now. 
and the twin fairies come up with the idea like, oh, why not Mothra, Rodan, and Godzilla cooperate? And they're like, really, you think Mothra can convince them to, to fight Ghidorah? It's just like, okay, you look and you're like, do you have any idea who you're talking about? <laughs> like, oh my god, they really came up with this idea. Like, really? We're trying to get three giant monsters to cooperate with each other. Like, really? Were they serious? Like, are you really, did you just, did you, legit, did you just come, did you just say that? Like, really. <laughs> and trying to get them, and like I said, I am going to go more in depth with each screenshot as this scene goes along here. Because it goes along for about six minutes. Hmm. Now, right, here we go. Now, this is shot, this shot here is after Mothra shoots at both of these guys, both of these two. Then they have like this summit meeting where, and it's actually cool, they have the fairies translating for us because mythical, myth, tiny mythical people can understand giant monsters, like can understand what they're saying. And they're saying like Godzilla and Rodan have always have had issues with uh, with people in the past and they they can give two shits whether Ghidorah destroys the world or not, like... They were, they're like more interested in beating each other up than Godzilla possibly killing Rodan. Because he can. So, Mothra's like trying so hard to get these two to just like, oh, to just, can you set aside your differences? Like, come on, man. Like, come on, guys. This world belongs to people as much as it belongs to us. So, come on. Come on, guys. Can you, can you guys stop? And the whole time, they're, they're, Godzilla's trying to beat up Rodan while, while she's explaining all this. And so then, uh, I don't know, it's just like... And then there's even a funny bit where you can tell Godzilla probably said, like, F you to Mothra or something like that. Because there's even, a, there's even one line where the twin fairies go like, Oh, Godzilla, what terrible language! Like, <laughs> really? <laughs> Godzilla probably said F you to Mothra. That's what it's looked like anyway. No. I don't know. Applying human traits to the monsters. It's like, okay, it's it's funny. It works for um, comedy value. But the fact that... I'm sorry. Now I'm eating pasta. Oh, my dad made, she made some pasta a little bit ago. and That's all I'm having here. I know my dinner is... Become a four-course meal. Well, and then here... Okay, and then you got this shot. Well, then after that whole summit meeting and Godzilla and Rodan can't just shut up and... Do, can't shut up and put their differences aside. Mothra says, Okay, you know what? Screw you guys. I'm gonna go fight Ghidorah by myself. She does. Gets her ass handed to her. Because she's tiny. I mean, you can tell. Look at her sitting on Rodan. Literally sitting on Rodan right now. She's tiny compared to Ghidorah. And then all of a sudden, Godzilla and Rodan... They show up, and they start helping out. They, it's, and then this, it becomes a three on, it becomes three against one. You got Godzilla, Rodan, and Mothra, all fighting Ghidorah. And the the monster battle is, the monster battle is really cool. And camera speed wise, it's it's the same. It's about the same as King Kong versus Godzilla. And it's a, and this is where. The big the monster rumbles were born for the Godzilla movies, having more than two monsters duke it out in Japan. It's a really great It's a really it's a really great monster battle. And like when you see the monsters um, when you see them fighting, they're like destroying bridges and knocking o and uh causing landslides and everything. Like they actually show the monsters interacting with the environment, and when then you see actually people get injured, <laughs> and it's like old time. I mean, I can't really say nothing when they show the. Sorry, that's me crumbling a napkin. When people get injured in the movie, it's like okay, for the effect, it's like for the effects, it's like okay, it's 1960s injured, so it's like you can chuckle at it a little bit, and what and literally I'm all. Mentioning this is like, you know, 
as just a typical Godzilla movie. Oh, and then here you go. This is the, um, when Ghidorah... And Ghidorah doesn't die in this movie. Like, none of the monsters die, except they explain, like, one of the other caterpillars. Um, they just had, like... And Ghidorah, he just flies away. Like, he literally just flies off. Like, seriously, Ghidorah does not die, he just flies off. Which is very interesting. <laughs> like, usually the mo a monster would die. Uh, this is this is like one of the last few shots of the monsters in the movie right this is towards the end here and this is this movie is really not your typical this is not your typical Godzilla movie I mean yeah there's all these and the reason why all the giant monsters appear is because they explain that Ghidorah destroyed Mars um, it destroyed Mars and that's why Mars looks like it is and apparently um, the Martians have this ability to tell the future, and they control this princess. They c take control of this princess. Literally, I'm not kidding about this. For anybody who has not seen this movie, the Martians take control of a princess, and they start warning, and they use her to tell Japan that Godzilla and Rodan and Ghidorah would come to Earth and start start messing everything up start destroying everything and then uh, the fairies call upon Mothra to try to be a peacekeeper and settle um, set everyone straight now and then also there's assassins who's, who are trying to kill the princess so like and the way they dress and the way they talk it looks very like godfather-ish like this movie is a mix of paranormal mystery um James Bond slash mafia style Intrigue and Godzilla. Oh wait, isn't that why you watched this review in the first place? Isn't that why you're watching this review anyway? <laughs> now let me just go all the way back. You can see how many screenshots I have. Like seriously, I found so many. Let me get back to the poster. Now, Ghidorah the Three, Ghidorah the Three-Headed Monster. My score for this film, I'm giving this a solid. It's with the five effects cons, it's not really like big enough. Well. Two puppets, I'm going to say. Yeah, I'm going to give this movie a solid 9 out of 10 for the special effects. The monster battle, the monster action is super, super epic. I mean, seriously, it's just like those few things that I mentioned were like, eh, okay. Alright, well, you, you, you caught it, and oh my god, why did they have to use the little puppets? Now... Alright, those are my thoughts on Ghidorah the Three-Headed Monster. Like I said, I give this movie a good... Actually, no, I give this movie an 8 out of 10 for special, for special effects. I give this movie an 8 out of 10. So, please like and subscribe to not only this channel, but to uh, the Movie Reviews Library. And also Magus Dragon, because he, my buddy Magus Dragon, um, he's with me on the Movie Review Library. And he also made the logo at the beginning of this video. So, he, yeah, and he also made the logo, well, he made the logo for these videos, so I will say peace out, everybody, and also, and also Magus Dragons, the link to his channel will be in the description below also, so I will say peace out, everybody, and I will see you next week with the next Godzilla film in the franchise. Take it easy, everybody. Uh, say goodbye, uh, say goodbye, Rexy. Uh, from Jurassic World level 40 Rexy from Jurassic World the game well take it easy folks I'll see you next week with the next Godzilla film no spoilers on what it is though see ya